Chi Minh City. Today we've decided to explore the French colonial history and there is a lot of that here because this was the capital of French Indochina between 1887 and 1902 and again between 1945 and 1954. Let's go check it out. This is Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica of Saigon and like our friends told us it is clearly under construction but it was built between 1863 and 1880. And right next to it over here is the Saigon Central Post Office which was constructed around the same time between 1886 and 1891. We've walked all around the outside of the cathedral and it doesn't look like we can go in, so we're just going to go check out the post office instead. The cool thing about this place is that this is actually still a functioning post office. Yes, there are a bunch of other touristy based stalls, but pretty much everything in the U shape behind me is still Vietnam Post. Just in case it wasn't obvious, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in Vietnam. We're now going to head down the road to that building, which is Independence Palace. And the tickets were 65000 each, so in total for the pair of us, that makes this about $7. Construction on Independence Palace was started in 1962 at the orders of President Deem and it served as the president of the Republic of Vietnam's office as well as home from when it was completed in 1966 all the way until the fall of Saigon on the 30th April 1975 which when you think about it isn't actually that long of a time period I think that's what nine years down to the bunker now. That's mean. So 
when are we moving in? Whenever they allow us to do so. I would happily just go in there and not change a single thing and just live there forever. That'd be great. I am so into everything retro and that perfectly fit my aesthetic. Mm -hmm. We've planned it all out where like our living room would be, the bedrooms, our gym, Nick's like humongous private home office slash gaming room. Yeah, sounds ideal really. They've even got a bunker just for you. Wait, why am I going in the bunker? Because you love bunkers apparently. Yeah. So this bunker really reminds me of the Deepin bunker, which we saw in Ottawa, Canada. It makes sense why they all look similar because they're all from the time period of the Cold War and they needed to have the same functions of housing the important political leaders, maybe military leaders, also having the ability to serve as communications rooms, and for strategic planning as well as protection and escape so it's not surprising that they all are similar but i don't know every time i see one it makes me giddy <laughs> i just thought that this was fascinating besides that this is the first building that i've seen personally where you combine a palace with a military control center due to the time in which it was built yeah it's just really really interesting stuff it was amazing to learn about how much history took place here. There were so many meetings between presidents of various countries and there were cabinet meetings and state visits and ambassadors were here. But what I found really striking was that all of this was going on at the same time as people were living in devastating conditions in the Coochie Tunnels. Yeah, it's kind of nuts to think about. Like you had all of this opulence going on and also in the bunker you had quite a level of comfort and a lot of protection. And you had all of this while on the battlefront, then the conditions were so much worse and you could be killed basically at any time. And it really does just kind of symbolize what modern warfare is all about, where you have command center being such a comfortable environment comparison to the actual front lines. Yeah, just a fascinating place. This was $7 well spent. <laughs> mm -hmm. As we were walking back from lunch, we started to reflect on our time here in Southeast Asia. It has been just over four months and I just can't get over how quickly the time flown by. Time apparently does fly when you're having fun so clearly that's an indicator of just how good a time we've been having. We've obviously been through a variety of different countries. Every single one has brought up something new and really interesting. I would happily do another four plus months in this part of the world. It's just awesome. Yeah, we actually have a plan of how we would spend another four plus months here. I'm going to say when we do come back because we can't wait until we're able to come back to this part of the world again. We really, really enjoyed ourselves. Mm -hmm. This is a truly fascinating and special part of the world, not just from a culture and history perspective, but also from a nature perspective and just enjoying all of the amazing things that are on offer here. I think really I'm going to miss it a lot. Yeah, we're going to miss the food. That's what he was trying to get at, the food. Not just the food, <laughs> the coffee too. No. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> But no, there's been a number of very much once in a lifetime experiences that we've been able to enjoy since we got here. And it's just been so special for that exact reason. We're going to take the next few days off from vlogging. Just to let you in on a little secret, we are very behind in uploading. So you won't see this probably until Easter time, but it's actually... Christmas time or about to be Christmas here in Vietnam. So we're just going to take the time to spend with each other and also hopefully virtually spend it with our families. So we'll enjoy that. And then when we get to pick this up next, then it's going to be very exciting because we're going to be moving on to 
an all new country and an all new part of the world. Mm -hmm. So we will see you then. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.